So starting with a new project will give you a section of Android. So this will always be there the moment you have KDP installed. Okay, irrespective of whether you have any platform or not. Under the Android, you will have something called Android project. Okay. Uh, first thing that I have to give is Android project name, and uh, uh, let me call it as uh, Android zero one Hello World A zero one Hello World. You guys able to take a note of this? Maybe for this theory part, you can come forward. And then you will have to select, although it's a checkbox, but you can select only one of the items. You will have to select what is the target platform. Keep in mind that the target platform is the only probably the initial choice. It will give you initial basic capabilities of your platform. And you can compile it for X platform. And you can say it can be deployed subject to the condition. It can be deployed on any device subject to the condition that the minimum version is Y. Y may be different from X. In case you want to support, let's say, older versions of Android, say example uh, 1.6, which is a pretty old version now considering that 3.0 is already out, 2.3 is there in production for quite some time. Still, if you want to support older devices because of your business requirements, you may say that when you compile, you compile it using 2.0 features which will give you some of the obsolete features or deprecated features of 1.6 also. But then the advantage that you get is you will probably be able to rent on 1.6 also in some scenarios. So we'll see how do we make those specific cases. So for the time being, I choose this platform level of 9, API level 9, okay, which is Android 2.3.1. Subsequently, what I provide is an application name. Uh, let's call it as Hello World and a package name. Right, so I give it as com Edigini Tutorials Android HW Hello World. It says create an activity. We'll see what exactly the activity is. I hope you remember this term activity when we went through the presentation. Said so that there is something called activity. Okay, okay. Activity manager. So let's call it as hello world activity. This is like a class name. And we require a minimum SDK version. Okay. Which as I said may or may not be same as the version for which we compile. So if I say I compile for 2.3.1, the minimum version required may still be 1.6 only. So you can deploy it on any device as long as the version is 1.6 onwards. Okay, so if I say next, it will give me said, do I want to create a test project? For the time being, we will not involve ourselves into test project. Uh, you are aware of JUnit? JUnit testing framework? Heard the name somewhere. Heard the name. Okay, so we will not do this part. The idea is that if you want to do a unit testing of your application, how do you go about doing it? Especially white box yeah, unit testing. Minimum SDK version I did not mention. Okay. Now we'll see in some of the cases if you do not mention what changes or what issues it may have or it, it works fine. So let me do one thing. Uh, without anything I'll just launch the application. We'll look at the generated code and so on. Just created some files, some source code and other things. So I'll just launch this product. Right click, run as Android application. So what it has done is a code something like this, which launches as UI wherein I get the name of my application on the title and uh, for the guys if you cannot see the text that I see on the UI the screen is hello world comma 
the name of my class, the name of my activity, which was hello world activity. This is the default code that has been generated. Okay. Because you never created that AVD. I created the AVD, that's why it's coming there. I'll, I'll just do everything. If I uh, look at the structure of the items that I uh, that we see in the project, the usual SRC folder where we'll put all, all our source code, and then we have a gen folder. It stands for generated files. So when you build a project, there may be a lot of files that would get generated. One of the beautiful thing that Android provides is segregating or separating the UI from the business logic, the MVC part. So what you can do is you can design your UI in XML format, maybe using some drags and drops. And then there can be a code that will fill the UI with the data. So a lot of these, you know, XML files where you create the, design the UI, they probably have to be pre-compiled and some code has to be generated, some content has to be generated. So in the generated files, a very crucial file that you will find is a file what is known as an R file. Okay. We will see what that R file is and this is the one that will give you access to what are known as resources. R stands for resources here. So the SRC folder, the generated folder, we have the assets folder and we have the resources folder RES. So in the RES we will see what those items are but corresponding to each item. So if I look at this, uh, let's say main.xml, icon.png, some strings.xml. So whatever these resources are, they will be pre-compiled by, uh, if I want to call it as the Android code compiler and the con content compiler and will create this file R so that you can use these resources in your code in a lot more easy manner. Now, you know, let's, if you, I mean, all those who have been working with uh, UI based application, be they for desktops or be they for mobiles using Windows Mobile or your J2ME or whatever, Symbian, whatever it is. If you have to show up an image, how do you do it? No, no, forget about the Android part. I said not the Android part. So everywhere probably you'll need to open the file and get the content and probably load it somewhere. So you need to get an access to at least the file input stream or something like that, right? And maybe pass it on to whatever is the constructor of the underlying class. Now here what you will have access to is everything in a very simple numeric value. So if I look at this file called icon, if I expand this file, um, I find something called icon. Okay, so then the file name was icon.png. I get this icon. This is my Java code. And if I look at the code that has been generated, I find icon is a simple int, public static final int. So you can access this resources that you have embedded in your application through these simple numerics. And there is a very easy mechanism out to convert this numeric value into whatever streams or whatever data you want it to be. Your headache becomes very less. Several times along with uh, these pre-compiled resources, what you may find is uh, some of the items that you do not want it to be pre-processed. Okay? You may want to access the raw data as is. Those things you can put in, in your assets folder. These are the assets of your application that will never be pre-processed when the final application is being created or being compiled. So if you have your icon.png, it is possible based upon the version of the platform that you target, of operating system that you target, and based upon maybe the device that you target, this icon.png may be pre-processed and maybe a part of the data may be optimized for that device. If you don't want some of these things to happen automatically, you'll have to ensure that you put them into the assets folder, but then there is no final int created for those assets folder. So you will have an API that you can read the data from assets folder and every time you'll have file input stream or input stream and you'll have to do that completely yourself. Well, yeah. Let's say I have two packages under source. What will the package of R.java have? Okay, so R.java package will just see where it comes from. Okay. 
then we have the most important file android manifest okay this is the starting point of your application so if i look at this manifest file it says that this manifest file has a package your r will always be corresponding to this package irrespective of how many packages you have now what you have to ensure is that this package is unique across all your product because this is a unique identifier for your application so ensure that none of your two products have the same package i mean in fact the same package and the version name so version code so a combination of your package and your version code should be unique okay. so what happens is if you install a newer version of your application the previous version will be overridden automatically when you install it this contains an information about an application which has one activity with some name with some stuff and this is the definition of my application so this is my manifest file now what i would do is i'll just look into the folder where all the files were compiled and everything was kept so let me just get into the folder of this project to look at some stuff behind the scenes so all folders looks pretty uh, common except for this bin folder which says that okay things would have been generated into this if i look at the bin folder i find a standard com something something all the files that i see and then i find a file called resources dot something underscore and the file called classes dot dex and the most important file which is the apk file that's your android package file this apk file is the deployable is the item that you actually dump it onto the device this is the application installable if you want to call it uh i mentioned that there is a format called dex format so what would happen is the first java compiler will run on your source code and it will create corresponding class files so we have the corresponding class files and subsequently a dex tool will run on this class file it will optimize some of the stuff in the class file and will create this classes.dex all the items that are there in your resources folder they will be pre compiled and all of them along with android manifest will be bundled and pushed into this package file this package file is nothing big if i rename it to zip i can look at the contents of this file okay so this apk file is actually a jar file format it's a zip file if you want to consider it and i'll find this classes.dex i'll find this android manifest.xml something that we created but if you want to look at the contents probably the contents are something which you may not be able to decipher immediately it was an xml file now it's not no longer an xml file it's a binary file so all of these xml files in your resources folder whatever they are they will be pre processed and probably you cannot just use them in a simple text viewer they are something which are understood by the android application runtime which is my dvm or dalvik runtime the Dal dalvik virtual machine so if i look at the res folder the layout we had this main.xml you remember this if i again open this file or oh, this is no longer an xml file at least however if i look at the xml file in my project it is actually an xml file so all these things will be pre processed by this tool and they will be compiled <coughs> 